Aloha, students. Hope you guys are doing all right today. Hope you guys are having a great Friday. Uh, hey, here in a couple of days, we're going to be meeting back at Allen Church. We won't be there. We're all going on vacation. But we hope you guys uh, come back ready to just worship as an actual uh, church within Allen Church. So it's been a while since we've all been in person, person, not doing videos. So it's going to be a great time. Please be there. Uh, we'll start like usual, 1030. We're only going to have one service, so please... Uh, just join us in the adult service on that day, all right? But hey, we've been uh, going through a lot of different types of apologetics, uh, a lot of different arguments leading up to the existence of God. Last week, we talked about the characteristics and the type of personality uh, that uh, the God who we've been trying to, uh, you know, build up saying that there is a God. Here's how he is. He points towards the Christian God. But now this week, we're going to be diving into uh, the person that kind of separates the Christian faith from all the others, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. And so today, we're going to be talking about uh, the different things that he claimed to be. So, Beautiful, what was one of the things that he claimed to be? He claimed to be the Messiah. And we can see this in several different spots in Scripture. The first one we're going to talk about is Peter's Confession, which is found in Mark 8, verse 27 through 30. And it says... Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. So in this passage here, um, Jesus is accepting the title of Messiah for himself, so he's claiming here to be the Messiah. Um, we also um, get a different kind of look at this um, from Luke and John. Luke chapter 3, verse 15 and 16 says, um, As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John the Baptist, um, whether he might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So in this passage here, and the same, it says the same thing in John 1, 19 through 27, these two passages are talking about how John the Baptist was confronted with the same question of the Messiah that Jesus is confronted with. Um, but unlike Jesus, John the Baptist denies this claim. He says, I am not the one you're looking for. I am not the Messiah. But Jesus, on the other hand, accepts the title of Messiah. So he is claiming to be the Messiah, unlike John the Baptist. Um, then in John 6, 6... John six sixty nine, it says, And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. So Peter is saying this here, and he is saying that they have come to know that Jesus really is the Messiah, who he is claiming to be. Awesome. And so you have Jesus actually taking on the claim, and then you have statements of others. Uh, Denying back, it. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And backing it. <laughs> yes. So awesome. All right. So uh, another uh, kind of example that points to him uh, accepting his and claim, uh, his claim to be the Messiah is uh, John's John the Baptist's final message to Jesus and Jesus' response to John the Baptist. All right. And so mm -hmm. you can find this in both Matthew eleven three through six, or you can find this also in Luke seven nineteen through twenty three. I'm going to read out of Matthew. Uh, 11, 3 through 6. And it says this. So John the Baptist sent word to Jesus through his disciples. And uh, they said to him, Are you the one who is to come, talking about the Messiah, or shall we look for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. All right, so when uh, John asks, 
you know, are you the one who is to come? All right, this harkens back to uh, John's proclamation independently uh, uh, attested in Mark and in John of him who comes after me, the one that uh, Beautiful just read about Mm -hmm. and that he is the one who is to come after me, which we can find uh, where John uh, says this in Mark chapter 1, verse uh, 7. And it says, and he preached, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I am, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. All right. There's also uh, an element of embarrassment on John the Baptist's part. All right. So if this was all made up, if I were to tell a story, uh, I would try to make myself look uh, to be the best that uh, I could be in that story. But John reveals in the story an element of embarrassment, all right? Mm-hmm. John expresses doubt about Jesus. Now, we see in John, uh, actual, the book of John, uh, we see that he's proclaiming that there's going to be uh, the Lamb of God who's going to be coming, uh, this one who is mightier than I am, who's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We see him talking about this, but now in this passage in Matthew chapter 11, we see that there's an element of embarrassment because he's actually now starting to wonder, are you the one that I've been, I've been telling other people about? Or mm-hmm. should, the, should we be looking somewhere else? So there's an embarrassment, there's an element of embarrassment there. So we can, we can, be, we can rely that John was speaking the truth at this time. Also in Jesus' answer to John, uh, appeals to the signs that uh, would herald the establishment of God's kingdom in Israel. All right, the signs that uh, Jesus mentioned uh, are part of a blend of prophecies that uh, you can see in Isaiah chapter thirty-five, five through six, Isaiah chapter twenty-six, nineteen, and Isaiah chapter uh, sixty-one, verse one. But I'm going to read uh, uh, from Isaiah chapter thirty-five. Verses 5 and 6. And it says, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame, uh, then will the lame leap with, uh, like deer, and the mute uh, tongues shout for joy. Waters will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. All right? And then you also have uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 19. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor are among mankind shall exclude uh, in the Holy One of Israel. And then Isaiah 61.1 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. So you have everything that Jesus said is all found in Isaiah. You have... Uh, the the blind will see, the lame will walk, lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, the dead raise, and the poor receive the good news. So these are two points, uh, the Peter's confession and John's uh, final message and Jesus' response, both of these point to Jesus being the Messiah. Join us next week as we continue to talk about who Jesus claimed to be. Um, We've got several more points on the Messiah and then even more after that. So join us next week for more about Jesus. See you guys. Bye.